Yeah, this thing was recording. I didn't know it. Look at this motorcycle. What in the world? Look at these. Wow. What is six cylinders? All rotary. I have never seen such. Look at that. What kind of engine is that? <laughs> it's a turbine engine. Air cooled seven cylinder four stroke. Man, look at this. Is that the um, the gift stop? A gold motorcycle. 1970 MK3 Sealy G50. <laughs> BMW. Look at this coffee mug. That's my kind of coffee mug. Yeah. It's pretty. It's only $12. Well, maybe after we do the tour, look up here. Two, look at this bicycle. My goodness, can you imagine riding something like that? <laughs> Babe, I'm going to walk around here and I see some old motorcycles I used to own. They got motorcycles I didn't even know they made here. Make watch this glass door. Got a race car up there. A Honda, an Indian, a Harley. Old Triumph, I had one of them. I call them a TR6 trophy bird. I don't know what this one is. Single carburetor. I never I had a Bonneville, which was a twin carb. Couldn't get uh, the carburetors ever synced up. My trophy bird, the single carburetor, always ran better, even though it wasn't supposed to. I had one of them Yamahas. YDS3, I think, was the model on it. Two stroke. It had a real deep throat sound. Every time you give it the gas. I delivered newspapers on it. And one morning, one of my customers came out to the door. He worked at Westinghouse, he was an engineer. I thought he was gonna complain because I was uh, making too much noise. And he said, I love the sound of that motorcycle coming up the street. Every morning I can tell you when you come in with my, my paper, it's got a deep throat sound really throaty carburetor sound on it. When you gave it the gas, it'd go Woo! And uh, his daughter was in school with me and I thought he was going to scold me, but instead he was very happy and was praising my motorcycle sound. Look at that. That's a 1959 Honda before they started importing them. I don't think they imported Hondas into the United States until like 63 or 64. Gene Romero, he was some rider. Here's his Triumph. Raced at Daytona. 1970, Triumph three cylinder. Look at that. Yep. A replica of Gene Romero's factory built road racer. Two seconds, 70, 71. Look at all these toys, babe. And look at that Triumph. A three cylinder Triumph. Tri Trident. It was a 750. Kathy's looking at the cars. Look over here. This place is humongous. 
everywhere you look, motorcycles or race cars. Look at this, two stroke. What in the world? I don't even know what that is. What kind of motor that is, liquid cool something. Hey, a Jawa. Made CZs. We used to call them CZs. I race those. CZs anyway. Made by Jawa out of Czechoslovakia. 1968 yeah, Jawa. Czechoslovakia. That was a motocross bike to ride back in the late 60s, early 70s. That and Husqvarna's Voltakos and Makos. I was a road racer there now, Augusta. They got them over here too. Norton's. How in the world they have all this stuff in here? I better go get back. We're going to have a guide coming soon. Take us on a two and a half hour personal tour. Everywhere I look, in Via Augusta. I guess that's how you say it, so I always said it. Yeah. Norton Max. They got a racetrack out there, look. They're out there racing, I don't know where you can see through there. Man, race cars. You can hear them. Cosworth Ford V6 engine. Yeah, I drive a Porsche around the racetrack. Unless you buy one, you buy one, they let you drive it for free one. Now this one, uh, they use this of 1800, and they're about a thousand on display. I always speak in round terms because I never know what's been acquired. Uh, I came in here Wednesday and I was doing a special tour for the boss. I was going to show some bikes. And unfortunately, the bikes are on loan to the circuit of the circuit Coda, the circuit of the Americas. In Austin, Texas, for the MotoGP they're having out there. Really? So, two or three of our more significant bikes are gone, primarily the John Surtees World Championship 500cc bike. Yeah. Uh, we are in about nine, we're, the, the area is about 880 acres. We're actually bigger than New York Central Park. <laughs> we use about 275 or 300 of it. The balance of it is a game preserve. I tell people when they're out here at night, drive carefully leaving because I've seen deer mm -hmm. and turkey and foxes and all sorts of stuff here. The track is on the picture you see behind me. We are on the button. We are on the right there. Right. That's the start. Oh, I see. Line right there. Okay. That's the paddock area. Okay. And this is the track. And we're, go we're going to go out on. We're going to go out on that bridge system you see there. Uh huh. We're going to go all the way out to the end of that. And we'll get a little track talk. Uh, <clears throat> this is what I refer to the turn. Turn nine is actually from here to there. Uh huh. That's eight. But that's, that's the place where you find out who's, who's good and who's bad. Ha ha ha, yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to go downstairs and we'll look at the restoration area. The okay. restoration area is a closed area, except I have the key to the kingdom here. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's open on race weekends, and just as a tickler, we'll have the Indy Grand Prix here two weeks from today, starting two yeah. weeks from today. And then in May, we'll have, a, we'll have the Moto America, which is the old Superbike series. In the fall, we'll have uh, the world, America's largest vintage motorcycle race week. We've got between <laughs> six and eight hundred motorcycles here. And this area right that area all of that and some of this up here will be a swap meet. Uh -huh. And I tell people if you want a vintage bike just bring a little hundred dollar bill <laughs> trailer. Well you don't even have to bring a trailer, but you can buy all the parts, the tools, the mix to build it, the trailer to hold it home on. But I it's amazing what you see over yeah. <clears throat> that's, an, that's an AMA uh, event, right? You know, that's an AMA, American Motorcycle Association. Yeah. Well, actually, I, I, Wayne Rainey, 
owns Moto America. And I, and I think I'm right on my genealogy. AMA, for whatever reason, sold it on. Heading downstairs. Man. Wish I had these motorcycles in my garage. <laughs> Pretty good size elevator here. You can bring your car in here, eh? said, Mr. Barber has some very special guests. Are you available for a tour? And I said, well, if it's, since it's the boss, of course I'm available. <laughs> and, and what I like to do usually is come out the day before, say, if I'm going to do a tour on Friday, I like to come out Thursday and just see what we do. Didn't have the chance to do that. That wasn't here. That was hung on the wall <laughs> last week. Uh, wow. What that is, <clears throat> That's a, a, a Ferrari 250 with a body for either a 250 or a 330. Some guy in Florida commissioned it. He was going to build a replica. He went, well, ran out of time, money, or interest. And we bought it. And he used to build it. So they build the cars, <laughs> renovate them, John and build them. Smells fresh and Have you ever heard of John Surtees? Surtees? I've heard the name, but. That red car. Is the car in which you won the 1964 World Formula One championship. And people say, well, how does how do you know it was his car? Well, he found it. The car was in Switzerland. All and he had perfect records. All the motor numbers and the chassis number and everything meet. Really? Match. But what you can't see, and I can't get it. We do a lot of educational programs for elementary school children. Yeah. special needs. Yeah, special needs. But we do we do educational programs. Uh, I said we're. I told I told the gentleman from, we're a little bit of a hiatus on restoring motorcycles because we got more than we can show. <laughs> well, over a thousand motorcycles, eh? Well, we got 1,800. 1,800, We've yeah. got, see that, you can't see it, but back there behind that wall, uh -huh. it's a four-level storage, plus floor storage. Man. And we've got another warehouse just like it. It's stuff stuffed in there. Man. Along here, and these are engines that have been acquired from various places. I have to look at them. That's a Perilla. Right. An Italian. This is a Rotax V-Twin. Yeah. Rotax made single V twins and they make flat fours. If you're an airplane freak, there are a lot of the new ult a lot of the new new the light. sport lightweights that have Rotax engines. Mm -hmm. And the bad yeah. happen, they're building a lot of ultralight aircraft and uh, well you can you can get that one up to a turbocharged fuel injected of almost 120 horsepower. <laughs> we also have we find stuff like this scattered around the skeleton. Yeah. Things of that nature. That's the part That's department. The CRTs, <laughs> this is back here sort of parts department. Wall of fame. Out of the old museum, which is over on the south side. It's the old museum used to have the race shop in it that did the restoration of the museums. Uh, but the motorcycles, it did some cars, and it's been put to much higher and better use. It's yeah. now a craft brewery. <laughs> so, I don't know whether that's better. You will find names up here. Uh, that guy, Fred Walmsley, uh, if you're yeah. a real motorcycle freak, he built replica engines in England for anything you want. For a <laughs> Sm you ever heard of Smokey Unic? No. Smokey Unit was the world's greatest British. cheater in NASCAR. He'll cheater. Never had, oh, the story about him is they, they pulled him one day after a race at, Tal at Daytona and said, you know, Smokey, you're in, you got too much gas in that tank. <laughs> and he said, no, I don't. It's, it's legal. And they tore the car apart. They literally took the gas tank out of the car. 
and they took the gas tank out and they said, okay, Smokey, we know you're doing something with this gas tank. He said, call your truck and tow the car out of here. Gets in the car and st started it up and drove it out on the gas they never found. <laughs> but this has got, got, this has got uh, friends of the boss, FOB. Some of these are very famous, some are not. Uh, that's, a, that, that's the guy that ran the big tractor farm here. Uh, the, the Caterpillar dealership. Which is like Mike Duckworth, if you yeah. read Mike magazines, that's Mike Duckworth. Right. Uh, he was here. I see Barry Higgins there. Uh, come down here. Here's Carol Shelby. Oh, yeah. And Cleo. And if you look closely, you go back to Smoky Unique. Back there, they were here the same day. <laughs> that was the day that John Surtees was taken into the Motorsport Hall of Fame in Talladega. And George had a big whoopee for him <laughs> at the old museum. Yeah. All but, kind of uh, plaques everywhere. This guy, if you're uh, familiar with uh, mid 50s, 50s, and 60s oh, yeah. dirt track in England. Right, right, in England. And he also is the guy that, that ran uh, Arma for a while. Yeah. If Bell Hill was here, Bill Davidson from Man. Miami, Willie G. From Look at Miami. all these. I'm trying to pick out some of these names that are, you might know as a, if you keep up with them. Uh, Fred Walsley over there. You ever heard of him? Uh, he, he builds replica engines that are certified for racing, classic racing. He may have built the ones we've got. Uh, I'll show you the things that he Look on this wall. Back Smothers. Here. I'll show you his car upstairs. <laughs> Dick Smothers. Uh, that right there, that's George. Porsche Carrera 904 GTS right He's somewhere on that grid. I don't know where. Part of the story I'll tell you in a little bit about why Porsches. Uh, there's a good picture right here of him. Chasing Mahan and asked for a parts manual on an RR250. We look at you and say, What? A what? Mm -hmm. There were two of these built. They were all exported to California, painted yellow, because <laughs> the distributor out there raced them as a development process for Yamaha. Fast but fragile. They had run a few of them in uh, Arma. As I said, they were 10 manufactured. We found one up in Indianapolis. Understand when I say we aren't speaking editorial. See those little dust covers? Yeah. On the, mm -hmm. on the, on the break. They don't, they, we didn't have it. We had, I think they had one. And each bike takes 12 or 14 of them. We had three bikes. And I'm going to show you how we solved the problem of not being able to get a disc cover. <laughs> a disc uh, dust cover. Shelby. Now, right here, these are all right. Shelby GT. Man. So this one is a uh, this is a fairly unique Lotus. It's a Lotus 23, but it's got a Porsche Park screen. We don't know how many people cobble these things up. We do know that and look at these everywhere the reason is to be successful outboard motors back there Typical 917 Porsche. Man. What a car. This when it first came out, I sort of known as the Yeah. Very, very unstable. There's a great story about a guy named Richard Atwood, Teddy Eddie, who was a famous British driver, got his start doing things in a uh, death trap for me. So I'll tell you why. It's 20 miles an hour faster down the middle of some straight than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So, pleasure rider. Which one? This one? Davino. Davino. Uh, 
65 Ferrari. Kirk and Cobra. And this is a famous car. The Bug. 66 Beetle. Do 74 wide open. <laughs> this is the point at which I look at this car and I tell people this is a this is a Buick about like I'm a Pope. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing Buick about this car is a reference a That's this one. body, the title, and on certain racetracks it may have run with Buick heads, but in the days when these were racing, General Motors V8s had a common bolt pattern, the heads. Everybody ran a Chevrolet bottom end because they had a full bolt band, stiffer. In those days, you moved the power band around and you changed oh, the heads. Mm -hmm. So you'd run Chevy heads in Daytona and say Buick's in North Wilsboro, like that. <laughs> but the engine is Buick. Bobby Allison. Oh yeah, this, this the chassis was built probably in Western North Carolina. Bonneville Streamer. Go karts. More and more motorcycles. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Bobby's a local guy. I think he may have moved to North Carolina. But he's local to here. Hmm? He's local to Alabama anyway. Or he drove what was called the Alabama Gate. Eastern Area Showroom for Haas Machine Shop. Okay. Machine shop in there. Machine shop, and you know, you know yeah. it's kind of kind of hard to bring a guy in and say, "I want to show you a machine." Bring it to somebody else's shop. Here. Look at this. 23 Ford. I had one of these XS 650s. Mine had a green, green and white tank on it. Looks like a Triumph engine. Had overhead cams instead of push rods. Triumph had push rods. A little bit more advanced than Triumph. Norton. Man, it's got so many of them in here. How do we get the motorcycles? I don't know. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of motorcycles up there. In front of that race, because they started in like two laps, they went down all the sudden. Nobody did plan. Let's see that center. <laughs> the, the suspension is all from the Fiat Topolino yeah. with the transverse leaf spring. Now, you know it's a motorcycle engine because you see the aggressive shift there on the right side. Mm -hmm. But there's another, there's another lever on the left side. Anybody know what that lever on the left side is? Maybe a clutch? Hmm? Does that be a clutch? Where's the, where's the gas tank on a motorcycle? It's above the engine. Yeah. You don't have a fuel pump. Oh. These are saddle tanks. Well, that's that's a fuel pump. A a hand fuel. fuel pump. You had to bump you, it to get the... Well, you sit on the start-finish line pumping it to keep the fuel pressure up. When he drops the flag, you pop the clutch, and about 50 feet down the road, you let go <laughs> because it's an eccentric on the output side of the gearbox that drives a mechanical fuel yeah, pump. Yeah, boy. That's crazy. Uh. With the biggest scissors lift you've ever seen. <laughs> no. I, you know, we've got one that reaches about two thirds of the way up. And I was out here one day, people said, How do you clean them? And I said, Very carefully. <laughs> and I got out here and they, they had iron lift out, dusting some of them. And I don't know if you, I'm a repository for all sorts of Yeah. Oh, how cute. <laughs> Okay, what we'll do now is just go upstairs. Before we go out, 16 or 17 turns, depending on how you count them. Uh, it's got 80 feet of elevation change. It's about 45 feet wide. The lap record for Indy cars is one minute, six seconds, and some change. 
so you know they're hustling pretty good all the way around. Mm. How can you drive that fast? About three years ago, there was a good article about Indy cars, and at that time, the Indy cars were putting out between 750 and 900 horsepower, mm. depending on the supercharger set, the turbocharger set. The car weighed about 13, 1400 pounds. Man. It had 2,400 pounds of down thrust at speed. Jeez. Yeah. A whizzer. That's it. That's cute. A whizzer. Yeah. They had kits that you could buy called whizzers. That might be one that you had to build yourself. Oh. I remember the good old days. Man. These are nice. Go out to the noise. Watch the race. You know, these motorcycles. Uh-oh. They power wash them. We can't go out. Tell them we got to. Let us in. Yeah, they're pressure washing. They got the doors locked. We want to watch the racing. The track. See that you can tell the contenders from the pretenders. Mm -hmm. They're coming down the back stretch there, and they probably come down that back stretch 150 or 60 miles an hour. They go into turn nine, and you see that single pine there. That's about the clipping point and the breaking point. Yeah. You come through there, the clipping point for turn nine, you see that rumble strip up on the far side of the track, mm -hmm. the checkerboard section. If you don't get all the Mustang Bronco. Sidecar. Aerials. These are, I think, Russians. No. Remember AJS. That's a Bonneville T120. Twin carbs. Yep. Bonneville. 58 Sherry. The paint is the original paint. We were able to source that from DuPont. The chrome is perfect. If you look at the interior, the seats are perfect. All of the over here headliner are perfect. He said everything about it. It's a great car. And they said, well, don't you want to be looking for a motorcycle? I'll tell you what you said on the motorcycle. I see it going to raise the phone to the engine. I see all the controls and I see the engine. I see the 52 Harley. Kickstart, kick you over the handlebars or break your break your leg when you, if it kicks back on you. Before they had electric starts, they had a, on the handlebars both the handle grips would move. One for the advance on the ignition, retard it to start it, and the other was the throttle. Uh, 650 Triumph Bonneville, and then they had a Trophy Bird, which was a single carburetor. These ammo carbs are pretty easy to work on. I had several of them. I had Bonnevilles, I had a TT Special, I had a Trophy Bird, which was a single carb. Yeah, one like this. 
this, uh, a lot like this blue one here, on five. And uh, it's really hard to start. When you're kicking on it, your head's down, and you're looking at the gas tank, and somebody had taken hand lettered the word bitch right across the top uh. of the gas tank. <laughs> and you're looking right at it. Right. <laughs> little Indians. Small little triumph. Tiger Cub, which was a piece of junk. Actually, it was made in Italy. Um, Indian. Oh, huh, what? Look at that little thing. Oh, yeah. A papoose. Top speed, 25 miles an hour. Yep. Look at the waterfalls over there, babe. frame with the racetrack gurneys oh that was the Beatles this bike this bike this Bentley was actually owned by the Beatles and the story behind it is this that the guys ran one of the great cars of the street Oh, excuse me. Well, oh, that's right. Yeah, just looking at side cars. Outboard motors, way up there. Look at all these bicycles. Later in life, you built one of the largest marinas on the Gulf Coast. Look at all these outboard motors all the way down. Push off. The only trouble is the first time he put a, a V8 in that, in that body and started it up, the whole thing wiggled. So we had to, it's probably, I think these still had some wooden parts. Hmm. I know Morgan <laughs> does. Still. Yeah, that old MGTD. You know, the great story about, and I read an article that said, Morgan finally modernizes. And I thought, you know, because they had carpenters and manufacturing flow. They used to start at the bottom of this hill and work their way to the top. And somebody after 75 or 80 years, wait a minute, mate, wouldn't it be easy to start at the top and just roll down? So they just flipped. 52, 53 MGTD. The, wood, this, wood, the doors would open, have. going around turns. Oh yeah, flex and pop. Exciting, yeah. but not very reliable, very expensive to maintain. Yeah, nice this looking is, car though. Uh, this is the last car George Barber raced, uh, 1965 Brabham BT-8. It's got a two and a half liter Climax engine in it. Now it came when he got it, it had a two liter engine in it. Uh, it would come off the grid as I was said downstairs. It would stay with almost any V8 in the country until you ran out of his gearbox and geared about 104. It never change. If you had a big V8 that was getting 170, yeah. Mm -hmm. When they got above that speed, they But Somebody's put the MGTD thing in there. Yeah. So this is a 59. They must have had the MGTD in here with the, the uh, placards inside the hidden over there. Yeah. Yeah, the one that was wooden that the doors would open when you're going around a turn. Oh, really? Yeah, the frame was wooden. Oh, wow. It's a 27 Ford Model T Depot hack, or taxi, I guess. Yeah. You like vintage motorcycles, <clears throat> there's a huge thing. When we had the salute to John Britton, uh, George toured her around the track. And it was interesting. She's a brave girl. She sat on the back 
going around and I just, you know, John, <laughs> she, and, and I'm not sure whether she was, she was either Miss or Mrs. New Zealand at one time. Oh, really? And she's a very, she's a tall, about a six foot blonde, very, very striking, attractive woman. To see her on that with that blonde hair flowing around at about 60 miles an hour, and she's brave enough to sit down. <laughs> you read Classic Bike magazine? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I picked up a little Classic Bike the other day. <laughs> Not bad. Look at this. Every floor is different. Yeah, that's good. I knew we had one, I never knew much about it. There were around 50 of them. The guy that built them was Lord Alexander Heskin. He also ran a Formula One racing team prior to doing this. When he ran a Formula One racing team, usually what was variously referred to as the British Standard Racing Club. I'll show you one of those downstairs. What's interesting about that, the basis of that engine was a bus. Yes. You just went by and saw the other ones. I had one of these. Yeah, rotary. And I'm the Midwest Missouri factory trained rotary mechanic. I'm the Midwest Missouri factory mechanic for one of these. You're factory yeah. certified to work yeah. with <laughs> This has all kinds of odd stuff on it. It's got a three barrel carburetor with like 23 different jets in it. Yeah. It's got a vacuum secondary that it would slowly open so the bike felt like it was a slug. But all the kids that bought these soon realized if you never shut the throttle, that throttle plate would stay open. And oh my God, that thing would it'd slam second gear and it would smoke the tire and do a really good job. And then they got good at replacing second gear in it. <laughs> yeah. how, long, how long did the seal, the rotor seals last? These last forever. Yeah, because Suzuki developed a seal in these that uh, held up. All wheel drives. Yeah, Christine. You know how they work? Yeah. Now, I had it explained, but tell me if the yeah. explanation of what it is. In the head stuff up there somewhere, there's a very high, high speed hydraulic motor. Pump motor. No. Huh? No. It's gear drive. But it drives a gear set. I was told it drives a gear set. Headstock. It is. Yep. These are these are the drive sheds. Yep. Comes down to, those. to a gear set down here. And he has to have two because if you just had one, it would torque yeah. the front oh. end around. Now, if you look up in here, there is a uh, unless this is something new he developed. Yeah, this is new. This is okay. maybe probably, you can see it better over here. You're right. You're probably right on hydraulics because I, I, uh, I was told <laughs> it's a hydraulic motor. I don't, gear set up I don't <laughs> see any of the gear books from here. Yep. It looks like a combination of your... That's a new one, though. Yes. It's a 1200, though. What was that last one called? The one in 13 or 14. The 1300? Of the, the six-owner? Was not. I mean, this doesn't look like the... Just to watch this guy run through them. Yellow tanks, I had a 250 and a 400. You know, we've got another one. Yankee from... This is a twin Osa. Uh, John, I can't remember the guy's name, John, somebody introduced these. Well, that's Jim Smith had something to do with it. Yeah. Um, CZ. John Taylor, yes. He, he developed this engine. He just took yep. two OSA motors and stuck them together. That's several of those. It was, uh, uh, then we had developed. 71, 125. But uh, I had 250s and 400s. I don't think I ever, I ever raced a 125, but a little bit bigger than that. And the Cannondale over there, a little taco. Man, that's nice. Hayabusa. Huh? Oh, yeah. They do? Yeah, they chain drive, not drive shaft. So he's all chain. No, you don't want, don't want anybody in your Ducati. It's a business only.
this. Dan had one of these Bridgestones yeah. 175, and I had a 250 Yamaha YDS3. And this is a rotary valve intake, rotary valve behind here. It turns off the crankshaft down here, and it was a little bit more advanced than Yamaha because you, you, the induction system gave you more power. And he could run with my 250. I had a hard time sometimes staying up with him. And uh, we rode to the state fair one time from Hampton to Columbia together. And uh, that was quite a trip. But Dan got in an accident. He and Kenny uh, Mixon were riding. He was a fellow, Kenny lived across the street from you us. You guys teenagers? Yeah, yeah. Oh. And, and Dan was making a turn. There was a couple of words behind him and this fellow coming home from service tried Funny to go around him and ran over him. <gasps> Broke Kenny, it didn't hurt Dan. The motorcycle went under the car right in front of our house in Hampton. And uh, Kenny, they put him in the hospital because it broke his leg real bad. I don't know whether he ever recovered from it or not. The fellow said he'd driven from Texas or somewhere, like straight through, and was trying to get home. And uh, didn't pay any attention. And the cars were waiting on him to make the left hand turn. Dan was taking Kenny home. And uh, the car, the car, the third car in line was the fellow. He went around them and ran over them when they were turning. Oh, my God. Yeah, I came home when there You're was cars people. lined up and down the road with flashing ambulance lights and, and uh, highway patrol and all. It wasn't their fault. It was the fellow, the serviceman, right. that came. And Ken, Kenny was okay, but I think he was forever messed up with his foot and his leg that was broken in it. Um, you know, had lasting permanent in, yeah. injuries from that. But uh, that was the end of Dan's 175 Bridgestone. It's just a standard body. And he made this tank and exhaust to make it look like a chopper. And uh, ended up selling it. Pretty nice selling looking. Tank. He just passed away. How many did we have? At that time we had 20 more. <laughs> now you got 26 mules. Yeah. Was that a 44 Harley? It's built for the. Military. Military. Look at the U.S. Navy. For the gun. Yeah. Let's keep up with our tour, babe. <laughs> I think the motor mounts are down on that one. Or not, not completely. You looking at the racing, babe? set this up was actually the chief designer for Motors here in town. And after they went bust, but what a goosey. Man. Ducati. These are pretty motorcycles. Man. He was so The HP was really awesome at the beginning. They would actually they built this whole thing here in Birmingham. Can you believe that? A replica. I guess it's a replica. They built it here in the design center. Production number one. What a motorcycle. Man, Olean's, Brembo Bakes, Olean's suspension. 1650 V4 engine. That is crazy. Look at that. I can't believe they built that here. First one. Jeez. Nothing better to do other than make build something like that. This is one pretty motorcycle though.
to say about intellectual property and property rights. They said they loved it because they didn't know kind of the story about the engine automotives. Yeah, when we use some GMC parts, you go, you can rebuild everything. You crank, you can't do the crank. Connecting rods, piston, piston, valve, 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 stretch, all the way over to both the GM Really? <clears throat> it's such a cool bike. So I got a friend that lives in town in Oregon. He's got two of these. He's got two different models. Oh. And he convinced he loves he loves the color Sergeant blue. Sergeant Seed. He convinced him to paint a, uh, the color blue for him. And he came out here and picked it up. I guess I haven't seen him yet. He's uh, he's a fine collector. Too. I told him he had sort of a sublime and ridiculous. Here's the sublime part of what he can do with that machine. You see. A red light will go through there and you can see it on. But at any rate, you see that the uh, Ducati Supermono, or yeah. the Augusta Supermono there in the front, the yellow and red bike. Yeah, that's Ducati. There were 12 or 15 of those made in the middle 60s for a class of racing mm -hmm. in, in Europe. Sound, was, of, sound of Singles. They were going to bring it over here for the yeah. Sound of Singles. Well, that was designed by Pierre de Bosch, mm -hmm. that bike. <laughs> what a scooter with a motor on this side, front wheel drive, eh? New York auto pad. It's funny, everybody thinks they're coming out with new stuff, but this technology has been around for hundred years. 100 years or so. CNC router. Make you anything you want. Ducati's made works of art. You know? These bikes are so nice looking. The Italians knew what they were doing, you know? The, the reliability factor is not as good as other bikes, but man, the, the engineer and the design, the performance is hard to beat. Mike Hillwood, he was world road racing champion. I think he was from England, though. Yet, yeah, looking down, all these outboard motors. Man, look at that. Seats designed like tires, spokes. A Britain ice cream. Look at this. Barbara's ice cream. <laughs> uh -huh. 1996. Passed away in late 95. John Britton. Oh. Sax engine. What kind of engine is that? Some kind of special rotary engine. Wankel. Yeah, it's a rotary wankle <laughs> engine. Yep, that was technology back then. Moto Guzzi. This is all carbon fiber, which in 1996. New Zealand. And I don't know whether it's worth the effort or not. Man. Some people do, so. About a question. It's different. Hmm? It's different, yeah. The trouble is, they try to hang everything off the engine, and the engine wasn't intended. It's a sand cast motor. So they had to do all this fold rail around the outside to get some hard points on there and attach it. Um, yeah. That was ugly. It is. <laughs> a Ronin. A crocker. <laughs> yeah, I love the beginning of that movie. He comes up and starts that bike, and, you, and if you put it on a good stereo system with surround sound, they recorded that so well. You can hear the ratchets on the on the Kickstarter, 
and you can hear the the engine sucking in the, everything when he fires it up you can go the car sucking <laughs> well that's what he would ride going just like that yeah exactly the view the, the broke superior the question is that bike was the, the two wheel Sad car. Boomerland. Crazy motorcycles in here. So this one was like in the Lawrence of Arabia. Going 100 miles an hour, wide open. The legend is he was. This is, these are works of art. Man, look at that muffler. Oh, you see this one to your right. <laughs> yeah, but this is something too. Four cylinder, or is that eight cylinder? Such an old one. Four cylinder, four stroke. Four cylinder, four stroke. Man, what year was that, about 1920? 1906. Oh, 1906. What a motorcycle. It would probably do 25 miles an hour. Eh? Oh, it's just top speed 45. 45. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the one you want to see. I know. That's crazy. A Honda. This is crazy. What kind of exhaust is this? Now that's loud. Look how stroked out the front end is. It's pretty long, hard. isn't it? Is this seriously how the handlebars are? Like yeah. This? Yep. Dangerous to ride, I would that think. Frilla yeah. did it. Yeah. Yeah, Frilla yeah, 650. Now, this is a uh, special one that a, a, a designer named Philip Stark designed. And the only. Yeah, some, somebody Stark, yeah. On there. Uh, he's a pretty famous uh, designer in Europe. And a lot of people love it or hate it. I think that's one of the most beautiful motorcycles ever made. It's all, watch everything's curved, circle. That's, yeah. Uh, that's what BMW based their six their 650 yeah, off of. Yeah, it's almost yep. exactly the same engine. Yeah. Uh, BMW put their own head on it, so they use their valves and their valve train. Uh, don't have, didn't have to buy more parts. Yeah. These actually hang better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pretty significant bike. Any dirt bikes up there? Uh, yeah, I'm a dirt bike guy. I really didn't have a street bike for a long time. Yeah. You just ran it when you got to where you got <laughs> turned off the gas and hope it stopped. Yeah. But you notice the architecture is almost like a street No brakes. Motor. Drag your feet. Yeah, it is. Oh my God. Now, here's something. Jeez. Connection rod. <laughs> there's the inlet valve. Mm -hmm. It's a poppet valve. But there's no there's no rocker on it. Yeah, they call it a poppet valve. Well, it's a, it's atmospheric. Mm -hmm. It's when the when the piston descends on the intake stroke, that's got a tiny spring versus the exhaust valve, and it so it forces it over. Mm -hmm. And it Look sucks on. A wooden motorcycle. More wooden ones. Jeez. Bicycles. Near a car. This is a Yale, 1910 Yale. This one, that's a pretty good as hard as hard as it didn't have acrylic paint. This bike, I think, this 
1913. 98% of the bikes can be on the track and running. This is one of them. This should be running in about an hour. <clears throat> but, you know, you sort of build a legend about these things. This bike is a 1913. This is a 1913 Flying Merkel. Nineteen eleven Reading Standard. That's what it says. Cleveland, nineteen fifteen. You've seen the picture of that? Oh, all the time. Nineteen oh three Indian. That's been restored. The fastest one ever disappeared. Captain America. Allegedly, the guy that built it never got paid for him. Somebody bought the. Vincent. This is this is the real. EJS. This is a bike that you had to run with the 350 championship. EJS. EJS and Maxis are just a Yeah, You've heard of Renzo who's name was Skate Died in a crash in 1973 in Monza. That crash led to a motorcycle safety on what uh, Mickey Lyle was raised in for four mm -hmm. months lit the fire because they every rider protested and the, the, the organizers and the sponsoring organizations say if you don't race you'll never race again. First lap, Renzo Pasolini and Saranin, Aero Saranin, died in the crash. Pasolini was riding a, two, a 250, a 250 race, riding a 250 Hermaki, Harley Davidson Hermaki. Yeah. They were bad to seize pistons, and he seized a piston. Everybody went down. I think 20 bikes went down. But two of them were killed outright. It, it took them over an hour to get help. Oh, jeez. Sort of like Mickey Lauber's crash. Uh, uh, there was an American couple in the Nuremberg building at the site where they had a marriage. He was burned terribly, and right ear was cut off from his helmet. And the husband, the wife said to the husband, said, Isn't that Mickey Lauer over there? And he said, You know, my God, I think he's right, because Mickey always wore a hat because his scalp was terribly there. And so, you know, I said, Aren't you Mickey Lauer? He said, Yeah, that's me. He said, Isn't this where you had your wreck? He said, Yeah, this is the place. He said, Well, what are you doing here? Why are you doing? He said, "Well, I'm looking for my ear. Have you seen it?" Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it may not be true, but it's a great. <laughs> these, all of these bikes actually ran at Daytona at one time or another. Hmm. So they're not, they're not phony bullies, as they say. I don't know most of the names up there, except I do know Freddie. It's fast, Freddie Spencer. Yeah, you he know did. him. He did a great job on the way of Triumph. Lots of nice motorcycles here. Over here. There's a Jawa. This is this is Michael Jackson's race team. <laughs> really? He ran a he ran a six hundred super sport team. This is Jordan here. Michael Jordan. Is it Michael Jordan or Jackson? Jordan, yeah. You know what else he did? One of his other passion laws besides basketball and motorcycles? Baseball. Really? Yeah, I think he, yeah, I saw he where he was playing that. He, he, bought, he tried he, to do that. He bought a two-year contract with the Chicago White Sox to play the minor leagues for them. <laughs> where did he play his minor league baseball? Birmingham, Alabama. Really? He came, what was funny, Birmingham, the 
Birmingham Barons are the first level of professional, and everything below them is semi amateur. They're the first. Michael Jordan's race team. They travel to their venues usually on 